Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Mini Brew from Arturio, which is a fantastic true analog emulation of these fantastic product from Arturia. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are inside the MacBook Pro M1 chip. Works perfectly fine. Uh, I'm just running it as a VST3 inside Ableton Live, as you can see from the screen around uh, Mini Brute. As you can see, straightforward interface. If you're already used to the original product, then you are already familiar with some of the controls. Sounds amazing. Let's start, first of all, at the top here, because uh, you have the selection of presets, so it's very simple. Just click on it, and you can see all the different categories on the left-hand side. And then, of course, you can select your, your preset. So let's start with bases, and let's start to listen to some uh, of the sounds. I purposely went lower on octave to see how it reacts. This is true based analog emulation. It has, of course, polyphonic support up to eight note, eight, eight polyphonic in terms of voices. <laughs> Down here at the bottom, you can see straight away the selection of uh, the, the way that is performing. So you click on it, you have a mono retriggering, mono legato 408 in terms of polyphony. So really nice. Here you have option to remove the keyboard as well, which is nice. And then you have, of course, undo. You have redo as well and show undo and redo history, which is really nice. As you can see, you have always a tooltip here at the bottom down here, which tells you what each of the knob does. So it's very simple to remember how it works. You just move your cursor, your mouse, um, the cursor mouse on top of a control, and then you look there at the bottom, at the bottom left, and you, it tells you straight away how it works. You can see here you have a panic so button, so for all sounds off. Here you have option for brightness, uh, timbre here as well and um, also a macro that modulates all the side parameters simultaneously in terms of timing and also a movement so again for further modulation now um you can see a lot of different section here you have your oscillator your uh, steiner filter here your oscillator mixer with a selection of course of sub oscillator and the different waveforms you have the envelope for filter and amplitude you have different settings here for velocity, filter, aftertouch, vibrato, your LFO, and of course your arpeggiator. Alongside, as I mentioned, to a keyboard down here at the bottom, right, the option for a unison and detuning here, your vintage amount as well, in terms of calibration state, your fine tuning here, and then typical controls here for pitch, bend, and modulation wheel and uh, again additional control here for the bend range the glide or portamento then you have your uh, modulation wheel range here and then the destination here which you can choose for the modulation wheel to go to the cutoff vibrato or lfo amount so pretty straightforward but let's continue to sample other uh, preset Nice and straightforward. You can hear, I, here I change the octave. You can change the rate here. It's sync at the moment, but you can have the clock to be free. So you change it as you prefer. Well, 
I think I prefer it to have sync. You can have it straight only, triplet, and also dotty. Now many arpeggiators have the dotted option, really nice. Of course, you can activate it here. Different modes of operating up, down, up, down. Uh, sorry, up, down, up, down, and random. And then, of course, an option for... Really straightforward, well, nice to simple, but that's what we need. We need uh, simplicity. Here you have a control for a hold, so which hold, of course, notes, right? Without, of course, holding that note on your controller or keyboard on the screen. So pretty straightforward. You can see that you have a star here because we changed it. Now let's uh, change category. Let's, let's go to brass and winds and let's choose another preset. Sounds really great. Let's try some electric piano here. You can hear straight away, uh, or you can see straight away, and here as well, Polly has moved to 8, because it makes sense in terms of the preset chosen. Right, let's uh, try some keys, and you can see here you have a bigger selection. And of course it makes sense to have uh, um, Poly here activated. Interesting. Yeah, you can hear unison and is set into two, of course, and but you can change up to eight in terms of voices, which is superb. And of course you have the tuning here, up here. Again, really straightforward. Something else as well, you can click here where it says effects, and then it changes the view here. You have tape, echo, you can see compressor, phaser, parameter, EQ, and then of course if you select here on the preset, you can change the type of uh, effect uh, preset for that effect which is applied you can hear the ping pong effect compressor of course you have preset for compressor there as well like hard medium etc and the controls are pretty standard in terms of threshold ratio output you can see they're pretty standard even in the tape echo pretty standard the phaser here uh, the feedback amount the frequency pretty pretty standard in terms of uh, what you would expect. Now, if you click where it says the name of an effect, of course, you can choose um, something else, which is nice. You can have a reverb, delay, um, tape echo, PS delay, dynamics compressor and multiband, which uh, is really nice. Distortion, for example, bit crash arm, different type of modulation. This is where you have your chorus, your flanger, etc. So, and if you scroll a little bit, so you can see a little bit more, you have filter here, you have a multi-filter, parameter, EQ for equalizer, and also stereo pan. So, oh, none, if you don't want to assign any effect whatsoever. So, a lot of choice for you to get used to how it works. Let's go to organ. like the multiband view, look here you can set the different uh, frequency in terms of crossover, you have the different amount, you can choose the level for out low, out mid, out high, and then your input of course gain, your attack release and output. And again, you can choose some presets here, right, which, which is great, you can also save your own, which uh, again, uh, multiple options, of course you can change the setting here. <laughs> Now 
let's choose something else. Let's go to pads. Why not? <laughs> Always like to hear uh, or to listen to a nice pad. You can hear a, a longer track. You can see here on the amplitude envelope your ADSR. So you can see it has a very high track. We could reduce it to listen to what it sounds like. A little bit faster. Maybe we want to increase the um, wet effect on the reverb. Bigger size. I like here you have a super unison as well. Nice to have a super unison as an effect. You can see you can change the number of voices here, the rate as well. So superb. Let's change. Um, of course, you can set your favorite here, which is uh, really, really good. You have sequences as well. So let's try some ARPs. <laughs> Interesting to have arpeggio on, but also delay on as effects. And here you can see the different slots, how they look when you have uh, no effects uh, active. Okay, let's try this classic dance. Interesting, let's try some strings, why not? Really nice. Of course you have some templates here as well, you have your default one, which is good. So you can start from this one. And then you can manipulate as you like it, right? Let's go to Cathedral. Nice, nice Cathedral preset for the reverb here. Let's go to Delay. It's very quick to change it with the preset. Great, of course you can turn them off like so which is great. And then if you want to concentrate on hearing how the different oscillator works, then you can play with the different uh, part of uh, the synth, right? So here we can decide, for example, the sub oscillator wave. Of course, we need to increase the volume. Or the amount for the sub oscillator. Here we introduce the ultra saw as a mount, right? We can turn off again the mixer, so it's nice here because you can add the different, uh, you have control for different waveform, right? Uh, in terms of mixer, so an oscillator mixer, which is great, it works strictly in collaboration with the top part here. You have option for a pulse wave, is great, also for a metalizer as well. 
can add, of course, an uh, envelope amount, which is great. You can decide the octave. And then you can play with the cutoff. Resonance. And of course, a brute factor. Of course, you have envelope for your filter and of course, the mode. Low pass, bend pass, high pass, notch. Um, you have also some uh, settings here. If you click on this cog icon, you have access to settings to set your MIDI channel, enable accessibility, the mono priority, last note, high, low. You can decide also the voice allocation. And then you have setting, of course, for your MPE because you have support for that, which is great. Then this is where you can configure your MIDI controller. You can also do learn for different type of controls in terms of sending CC messages. You have macros as well here, which you can define in terms of also envelope, like in this case, the, uh, the uh, filter envelope decay with a minimum maximum value. Great. And then, of course, you have access to different tutorial as well. And then up here, top left on the hamburger menu, you can decide to create a new preset, save it, um, import it, export it, resize the window, different size, which is great. You can change the theme as well, superb access to tutorial help, and then you're about. So pretty straightforward, sounds lovely, uh, it's really nice, and uh, as always, uh, um, give it a, a go, sounds great. Let's try actually more leads. I just activate the MPE so I can play a little bit more with it. And of course, if you click where it says Arturia here, you have access to additional control where you can set your dispersion for pitch, for your wave shapers, for gain, for the cutoff in terms of filter, also for the feedback, and ultimately also you can um, change the dispersion on the envelopes, which uh, the amp and filter envelopes, which is absolutely superb. Okay, um, I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed the introduction and short tutorial on Mini Brute from Arturia and as always see you next time. Bye.